Right, Daryl, we're going to get into the second video now in this series. And what we're going to look at in the second video specifically is looking at the different oils that your car takes, how to check those oils, and why it's sort of important to check those oils and some of the things that you could use to your advantage in terms of um, checking the oils. First one we're going to look at is engine oil. That's also the most important part or the most important oil to check, um, purely because this is literally the difference between a good motor and, and a bad motor. So what you want to do is get into the bonnet, which I'm going to show you how to open it. I'm not going to assume anything. I'm going to show you how to open it, get into the bonnet, and we're going to show you typically where you can find the dipstick and what you need to look out for. Okay, so in most cars, um, when you're sitting behind the driver's wheel, <laughs> when you're sitting behind the steering wheel on the driver's side, if you look just at the bottom, you'll find a little flap like this, which you need to pull to open um, the bonnet. This is not a rule. Sometimes it's a little lever that you have to pull on the side over here. And in the case of French cars specifically, I know um, that little lever might be located on the far side in the driver side of the of the car. Ah, the, the passenger side, my apologies. It might be sitting on the passenger side of the car. Your friend in terms of finding these things is always the owner's manual. If you're in doubt and if you can't find something, consult the owner's manual. They are typically very well divided into pieces and you'll be able to find the information you're looking for fairly easily. Right, so now the bonnet is open. We're going to go to the front. Getting to the front of the car, all cars that I've driven to date have a safety latch on the bonnet. So when you pull the little lever, the bonnet does pop open, but it can't open all the way because of the safety latch. I still wouldn't try and drive this car at 150 or 120 kilometers an hour, um, despite this safety catch. Now the safety catches typically live in the middle over here, and it's either a little lever that you have to pull up, or one that you really cannot see it, or one that you have to push aside. Get it, just get down, look inside there, you'll find it very easily, pull it up, and you can open the bonnet. Right, so this one over here is a little lever that I had to push up to release the safety catch to be able to, to um, open the bonnet. Some cars will come with struts to keep the bonnet up, and other cars like this one will come with a strut that you need to lift up to support the bonnet. Let me quickly do that and I'll show you what the strut looks like when the bonnet is open. Right, so I lifted up the strut over there and with all these cars you'll find well, that's got a strut, you'll find a little place with an arrow that will indicate where the strut actually needs to go into. This is to safely support the bonnet while you're working underneath here because the last thing you want is for this though to come crashing down on your head. Um, on this particular car the bonnet is made of aluminum, aluminium as we say in South Africa. Um, so this one is quite light. Um, you also get bonnets made from carbon fiber, again fairly light. But if you get a car with a steel bonnet, this I could leave a mark if it's going to drop down on your head. And you certainly don't want it to drop down on your fingers either. Right, let's get on to the first type of oil, which is our engine oil, as promised. Right, I just had to position a light here very really quickly so that you can actually see what I'm doing. Uh, on this car, in most cars, you'll find a dipstick in the front over here, and they're often yellow or orange or red, so that you can obviously find them. If you're in doubt and you can't and you don't really know where to find this guy, drive to your local uh, local gas station or service center or something like this. They will quickly show you where to find the dipstick. Find yourself an old rag, anything. You can also use the T-shirt that you're wearing. Don't really care. But what you want to do is, is while you want to pull out this oak. You want to cover it in this piece of rag because the last thing you want to do now is drop engine oil on your engine because that's going to smoke and smell and and um, all kinds of weird things that you really don't want to do. So you pull it out and you wipe it clean because you want to start with a clean um, dipstick first. Okay, now I need to get this thing to focus here on the dipstick. Please focus on the dipstick. Let me see if I can get this to focus. Okay, focus on the dipstick. Uh, not focused on the dipstick. Right, okay, so what you're looking for on the dipstick itself, and let me just see if I do this, 
um, you'll see there's a H mark on the one side and a, and a cold mark on the other side. This is for when the car is hot and cold and you really want the oil to be in between here somewhere. It is always better to check the oil when the car is hot or at operating temperature and then you want the mark to be closer to the hot side than to the cold side. The, the oil needs to be in between here somewhere. It, it doesn't have to be on the hot mark and it should certainly not be on the on the cold mark or the minimum mark. Sorry, it's not the cold mark, it's a low mark. So you've got a high mark and a, and a low mark, but the high is also for when the car is hot and the low is also for when the car is cold. Rather check your, your oil when the car is at temperature and you want it closer to the high side than to the low side. Now on these performance cars, on the 370Z specifically, we know that when we fill up the oil, we don't want to overfill the car. So typically we're looking at the oil sitting at about the halfway mark. For these cars it could be different from your car the rule of thumb is closer to the full mark than what it is to the to the low mark and that's what you need to look for so now because i wiped it clean i can stick the dipstick back into its spot and i can now put it out very carefully not to drop oil all over and you'll see the nice golden clean oil now we need to get the thing to focus again you need to see the nice golden clean oil there sitting closer to the top mark than what it is to the bottom mark and I therefore know that my oil is two things number one clean and number two at the level that I'm looking this thing uh, looking for this thing to be sorry the other reason why I wiped the dipstick on the first removal of the uh, of the dipstick was because the car has been running the dipstick is completely covered this dipstick sits in the bottom of your oil pan it's completely covered in oil so you won't get an accurate reading so we need to clean the dipstick first before we can stick it back in there and then pull it out to check what the accurate current level is while the car is off that's important to note that the car needs to be off while i'm checking engine oil because the oil is slushing around on the inside over there as opposed to automatic transmission which we're going to get to a little bit later where the car needs to be running for us to be able to check that oil level okay let's move on to the next oil that we need to check a little longer than a few minutes later the next level that we want to check is the brake fluid level now for this car the brake reservoir is covered by a piece of plastic and i forgot that i zoomed in for the previous one there we go so what you see here is the brake booster and the brake fluid reservoir and on the side of the brake fluid reservoir, you see a little mark up here that says that's the full mark, that's the top mark. And again, you just want it to be close to that mark. Be careful. This oak being low can also mean that the brake shoes on your car are worn. So it could also be an indication of your brake shoes being almost finished if the brake fluid level is low. So don't just willy-nilly go and top up this thing to the max. The problem, of course, is when we get to changing the brake shoes or the blocks or whatever you want to call them, um, you're going to push back some of the fluid into the reservoir. And if it's then overfilled, you will need to take that out because these things and paint don't work well together. This will eat up your paint big time and also leaves quite a mess on the floor. So don't just go and fill up this thing if it's not at the correct level. Rather, go and check the brakes, which will cover in a different story so as i mentioned for this car over here um, the brake fluid is covered by a plastic lid and it says brake fluid at the top so you really cannot mistake it for anything else in many cars where it's not an automatic car like this oak and you've got a manual transmission the brake fluid might also double up as your transmission fluid or there might be another one inside here that says transmission fluid and you can obviously then check the transmission fluid at the same time Righty, let's move on to the next item. Always remember that life is too short to drive boring cars.